I've been obese all my life. But on the 18th of September, 2023, I made a decision that would change that forever. I started counting calories. Calorie restriction can extend life and delay diseases like diabetes and cancer. Calories, calories, calories. Over time, consistently limiting calories actually slows down your metabolism. Your body uses energy more efficiently and all that means less work, less stress, and ultimately less damage to your cells. Cooking to make each calorie count now so they see the gains in life later. Will this number be accurate? I've tried to lose weight multiple times. In 2018, I went on a starvation diet because a girl I liked called me fat. And for the first few months, I lost a lot of weight. But then one day, I crashed and I gained it all back and more. In 2020, I tried again. This time, I cut out bread, rice, most carbs, and every sweet treat. Biscuits, cookies, soft drinks, everything. I also started intermittent fasting where I would have breakfast around 11 a.m. and dinner before 7 p.m. But then when the pandemic hit, well, so did my diet. I lost all motivation and I gained all the weight I lost back and more. I've gone through the same cycle every single year since 2020. I'll make a new resolution to lose weight, but like most of you watching this, by early March, I wasn't resolute enough to stick to the resolution. If you've ever struggled with your weight, whether you've tried to gain weight, lose weight, or just maintain your current weight, I'm sure you can relate to what I'm saying. But all of that changed when I started doing research and I discovered that the science was clear and that the only thing that matters for weight loss is to eat in a caloric deficit, not some miracle diet or intermittent fasting or anything like that. It's calories in, calories out. It's the first law of thermodynamics. In this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. So I decided to start measuring everything I ate to see if it will help me lose weight sustainably. Spoiler alert, absolutely. But first, what exactly is a calorie? Well, a calorie is a measure of energy, the energy that our body requires to function. So your body breaks down the food you eat into energy. This energy gets used throughout the day for everything from basic things like breathing and maintaining your body's temperature to more active things like walking or exercise. At the end of the day, any energy that's left is stored in your body as fat. So if the food you eat doesn't produce enough energy for the body, then the body goes back and takes from those fat stores and that's how you lose weight. To make it easier to understand, think of your body as a car. Just like a car requires fuel to move, your body needs calories to function. If you buy too much fuel for your car, once the tank is full, you will have to store the excess in a container somewhere. And then if the fuel in your car finishes, you take from that storage to replenish it. That's basically how it works. Sadly, tracking calories is not as easy as looking at the fuel gauge in your car. And so I ran into some issues right as I started. First, I had to find out just how many calories I should be eating in the first place. This one wasn't too difficult. There are websites online that you can use to figure out your basal metabolic rate, which is basically how many calories your body burns per day on average. So by eating less than that, you're eating in a calorie deficit. Now, will this number be accurate? Absolutely not. But it will give you a baseline to start from, and then you can adjust the number of calories you're eating if you're not losing any weight. Now that I knew just how many calories to eat, I had to figure out how to actually count those calories. Here's how most people count calories. They buy something from a store, scan it with their phone with an app like MyFitnessPal, and voila, it gives them the nutrient information that they need. Unfortunately though, that doesn't work in Nigeria where I live. So how did I track? Well, I would get a recipe online, measure everything raw, and then I would search like chicken breast raw calories, USDA. Uh, which is the United States Department of Agriculture because I just found that they had the most consistent uh, calories. Or I'll do fitnigerian.com for foods that are native to Nigeria. By the way, I'll leave all the links to all these resources at the description just under the like button. I know this all sounds confusing and time consuming and I won't even lie to you. At the beginning, it is. But if you stick to it, it gets much easier to understand. To make things easier in the beginning for myself, I ate the same thing every single day for the first month. Pancakes for breakfast, chicken wrap for lunch, jello fries for dinner. I found the recipes online, counted the calories once, and I just stuck to it. Around a month into it, I got tired of eating the same thing every day. Honestly, it got to a point where I basically had to force feed myself the pancakes because I just did not want to eat them anymore. I don't have a sweet tooth, so eating something sweet for breakfast every single morning kind of started to make me feel... Like shit. This is usually the point where most people give up on their diet. They crave something different and once they break their healthy eating streak, they spiral out of control and go right back 
to where they started. But this is when I started to see the benefits of counting calories. I realized that I was free to eat whatever I wanted. I didn't have to be restrictive with my diet at all. Yes, it would take some time to count, but once I did, I could just save the recipe in a Google Sheet and use it whenever I wanted. So I changed my breakfast. I made half the pancake I was having before, and then I filled the remaining calories with chicken breast and scrambled egg whites. Now my breakfast was savory and I could continue with my diet and actually enjoy what I was eating. Today, I eat pizza for breakfast. Pizza, it's insane. And it wasn't just breakfast. Counting calories helped me build a much better relationship with food in general. You see, before I started counting calories, I would look at food as either good or bad. But after I started, I realized that these foods aren't bad, they're just supposed to be had in moderation. The majority of my calories are now coming from um, these delectable little snack cakes. That's how this is Mark Hop, a professor of human nutrition who in 2010 ate a diet consisting of 80% The junk science is, is simply to, to see if these products, which are, which are thought by many to promote or lead to the development of obesity, if they can actually be used to do just the opposite. I'm eating 1,800 calories a day or less and exercising roughly 60 minutes to an hour and 20 minutes a week. I started out at 200.8 pounds, I'm now down to 195 in a week, but I expect roughly about 15 pounds if I continue the same process given where I am to be down in four weeks. His math was perfect because at the end of the eight weeks, he had lost 27 pounds and he was able to maintain that weight after the experiment. Now, this isn't to say that you shouldn't be eating healthy, but what it means is that you can have that junk and you can satisfy your cravings once in a while, as long as you're not eating too many calories. For example, this is a serving size of Pringles and it has a pretty respectable 154 calories. If I want, I can have this every single day and still lose weight. This is what I love about counting calories as opposed to other more restrictive diets. By understanding exactly what is in the food I'm eating, I can have occasional snacks like this without feeling guilty or feeling like I've ruined my diet. Around three months in, I had gotten really good at counting calories that I could now experiment. I made rice and beans, stir-fried pasta, chicken and chips, and I also started focusing on the macronutrients of my food and not just the calories. I made sure I was getting in enough protein so I could build some muscle, carbs for energy, and fats for maintaining good hormonal balance. Just as I was enjoying counting calories and relishing that, I finally found the secret to long-term diet success, another problem came up. Hello babe, quick question. How did you feel when I told you we couldn't share food anymore? It was very annoying because you know, like eating your food. <laughs> it was very annoying because like I can't eat your foods because you have the specific like calorie whatever. You can't eat my food, which is also annoying because of how calorie dense I eat. It was not fair. I didn't like it. I'm not really a social person, and so for the first three months, I was basically always in my house. And so I wasn't really missing out on anything. But then in December, my partner got back from school and she loves going out. Plus, it's December in Nigeria, so there were a lot of social activities. I went out with my friends and I couldn't order anything. I went to a wedding and I didn't eat anything. If you're Nigerian, you definitely understand how huge that is. This was the side to food that I didn't really think about before counting calories. Food is not just energy. For most of us, it's social. But these are just the sacrifices that you have to make when you want to get results. At the end of the day, it's only for a period of time. When I get to my goal, I would still track everything, yes, but I would have way more calories that I can fit in stuff like eating out once in a while. At this point, my diet was pretty much on autopilot. I meal prep all of my dinners on Sunday, plus I found this really good company, Fresh Meal Prep, here in Lagos, that sells amazing takeout meals with all the calorie information for you on the pack for when I'm just too busy or too lazy to cook anything. They're not sponsoring this video, by the way. I just really enjoy their meals. But I mean, if you guys want to sponsor me, you already have my Instagram. Hit me Some up. people say that counting calories is not the way to lose weight. Right after that, they then recommend you their own magic solution. But the reason I love counting calories is that it doesn't recommend any one type of diet. Keto, intermittent fasting, you can do whatever you want as long as you're in a calorie deficit. 
you don't have to drastically change your life and the foods you love to eat just so you can lose weight on the other hand i know that tracking this religiously can be very confusing and just feel like a burden i mean here's a spreadsheet for the past 30 days of me recording every single thing i eat it doesn't look pretty but for me i love tracking my calories because it's food math and i'm a nerd but if you don't like the idea or you just find it too much you don't have to count every single calorie and certainly certainly not for as long as i have however if you're trying to lose weight and you don't want to count calories here are the things i recommend that i believe will make the most difference measure your oil or use an oil spray swap out sugar for zero calorie sweeteners and soft drinks find low calorie meals online and just copy the recipe and finally keep a food journal Record everything you eat, even if it's just for a few weeks or months. And you don't have to write the caloric information, just write the food itself. And be honest with yourself. The plantain you ate while you were frying, the puff puff on your brother's plate. Write everything down. Because what gets measured gets improved. By writing it down, you get a much better understanding of what's going into your body. And it makes it easier to find ways to reduce the amount you're eating if you want to drop a few pounds or increase it if you want to add a few pounds. Now, the only way any of this information will be useful to you though, is if you're not too lazy to put it into practice. So watch this video next to find out how I fixed my laziness and how you can too.